Welcome to Red Panda Plays, the tangible edition, where we're gonna be uh, learning how to play the Digimon card game very quickly. And then Jay and I are gonna take the starter decks out for a test drive and see how they play. My name is Pedro, and with me is... Jay. <laughs> or Jeff, you know, okay. whichever. Now we're gonna go over the basics of the game. So we're gonna start with the different types of cards, Jay. So Jay, you're gonna see us play Trainer cards. Oh, you got TK. Yeah. So the Tamer cards are going to be representative of the Digidestin from the TV show. When we play these cards, we're going to pay the cost listed at the top left of the card, and they're going to stay out on the field and give us an effect throughout the turn. We're also going to be playing cards like this, option cards. Likewise, on the top left, we're going to get the uh, cost of the card, but these cards are going to give us temporary effects and after we're done with the card, we're gonna discard it down here. We're also gonna be playing, obviously, Digimon. And there's different types of Digimon cards. Mainly, they start out with the baby level Digimon, which are level two Digimon. These Digimon can't exist in the play area. They can only exist down here next to the um, hatch pile. These cards have specific card backs that are different from the rest of the game. Once these Digimon grow up to be big and strong, then they can make it out into the field. And we're gonna be doing that by digivolving the Digimon. The way we do that is just by stacking the Digimon on top of each other. Once they're strong, they can come out. Those are the different types of cards. Let's go over a few mechanics. So let's go over the Digivolution mechanic and how that works. Every Digimon is going to have a cost, like the two other cards we talked about, in the top left. That's how much it costs to get this Digimon out onto the field. However, if we want to get the Digimon out by digivolving it, we're gonna be using a different cost and following a different rule set. In order to digivolve, we're going to already need to have a Digimon out. We're then going to place the Digimon at a higher level on top of it, and we're gonna use this secondary card uh, cost to play. So it would be two, instead of the five. And we're gonna continue to do that until our Digimon is super friggin' powerful. <laughs> the beauty of this mechanic is that if you look down at the bottom of some of the Digimon cards, they have an effect. And this is an inheritable effect. You only get this effect on the top card of the Digimon stack. Once we have this really strong Digimon, we're gonna be using it to attack each other, each other's Digimon, and each other directly. When we attack each other directly, we actually have some protection. And that is represented by this stack of cards, which are called your security cards. Whenever these get attacked, you get to flip them over. And if you flip over a Digimon, they fight each other. But if we do a security check and flip over an option card, we actually get to use that card's effect. So it's very dangerous to attack each other. And we wanna make sure that we have Digimon that can break through all the securities and beat each other. The game's going to end when all security checks are gone and we attack each other directly. Or when we don't have any cards in our deck and we try to draw a card at the beginning of the turn. This is probably gonna be my fourth game and within the first or second game, I, I figured it out. It's quite simple. And, and it, it starts to flow quick. Yeah, the flow, you understand the flow after like the second game, and then by the third and fourth game, you have your basic strategy and you know what you need to do and what you need to prevent the other guy from doing. So uh, let's just get into it. To set up the game, you're gonna have your deck of cards and you're gonna have your deck of Digimon, uh, baby Digimon cards. You're gonna put those there. You're gonna put the deck over here. You're then going to take the top five cards and create your security stack. You're also gonna take the top five cards and draw yourself a hand. Three, four, five, oops. It's messy, it's messy, it's fine. One, <laughs> two, three, four, and five. Okay. So the way the game turns are going to be dictated is mainly by our mana system. So this game, mana is called memory. 
each player can have up to 10 memory at the beginning of their turn. And they're going to be able to play cards, reducing their mem uh, memory pool, until they go essentially into a negative number. Once you go into a negative number, it means that you've given your opponent mana and it becomes their turn. So for example, if I have two mana as the red player and I play a card that costs two, I'm gonna move this down to the zero marker and then my turn is going to continue. However, if I have two mana and I play a card that costs four, then I'm gonna move my marker all the way to minus two means I've given Jay two mana and his turn begins after that. At the beginning of the game, the mana just starts at zero. All right, Jay, let's see who goes first. All right. I got a six. I got a six. You, what the? I'm We're gonna, nice, this I'm is nice. Just... I got a two, you got two. <laughs> I'm nice, I'm nice. Yes. Yeah, okay, I was gonna be upset. All right, Jay, you get to start us off. When you start the game, the player that goes first doesn't draw a card, but usually the g turn does start with drawing a card. And before we start playing, I am actually just playing uh, the yellow starter deck, and Pedro is using the red starter deck. So if you buy a starter deck, this is exactly the cards that you're going to get. So Jay's going to start his turn. Because it's the first turn, he won't draw. So he then moves on to the breeding phase. And during the breeding phase, there are two actions you can take. You can either hatch a Digimon, Tokemon, as Jay just did, or, like we talked about, when that Digimon gets stronger, it can be moved out into the battle area. Once Jay is done with his breeding phase, his main phase starts, and this is where he can start playing much more cards, taking attacks, and so on. So it is now my breeding phase. I choose to Digivolute Tokemon to Patamon, and that has a, zero, a cost of zero, so I don't have to spend any memory. And since I evolved, I get to draw a card. And I play Salomon on the field, and that has a play cost of two. And I end my turn. So even though I gave Pedro two memory, it was be it's better than the alternative, which is passing on my turn and giving him minus, uh, giving myself minus three memory if I was at zero or above. My turn starts, I draw one. During the breeding phase, Digi Hatch. Coromon. I'm going to Digivolute Coromon into Beomon. Draw one. Oh, we we doing stuff tonight. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm going to Digivolute Beomon into Birdramon. Oh Draw god. one, and that costs two. Then I'm going to play Coridramon, costing me five and giving Jay five memory, Ooh. and it's his turn. Five memory. All right, my turn. I draw a card. So now it's my breeding phase. I choose to move this guy out. Patamon come out of the breeding center. <laughs> and then since he's out, I still can evolve him. So I will do so. And I will evolve him to Gatamon. And that costs two points. So I am now at three memory. And since he's evolved, I get to draw a card. I just love to evolute. So I am evolving Salomon to Unimon. And that will give me one memory since it's a two cost. I get to draw another card. And you know what? I love evolving. I love evolving. <laughs> I'll play Magnet and Jamon, and that's a three cost. One, two, three. Leaving me at minus two memory. Draw and a card. I draw a card. You're right. And it becomes my turn. And it becomes your turn. Start of my turn, draw one. During the breeding phase, Birdramon comes out to the battle area. Digivolute Birdramon into Metal Karimon. It'll cost three. Draw one. And that ends my turn. All right. Passive. Passive, passive. I love <laughs> it. Draw my card. I choose to hatch an egg. Tokemon. My boy. And then I will evolve him for free with zero points. I get to draw a card. So as a precaution, I will blow seven of my memory to deal 1,000 DP, uh, 10,000 DP to Metal Greymon just to get him out of the picture. <laughs> So that leaves me at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, minus six. Yep. And so Digimon have DP at the top right. It represents their battle power. If that number is ever altered and reduced to zero, the Digimon is automatically destroyed, which is what Jay has just done. Since I dropped his DP to zero with an option card, uh, Patamon on here and the inherited effect 
when an opponent's Digimon is deleted by dropping to zero DP, gain one memory. So I'm actually at minus five now. And that ends my turn. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> my turn. Draw one. Breeding face, Digi Hatch. Coromon, Digivolute to Beomon. Draw one. Beomon, Digivolute to Greymon. Cost two. Draw one. And then Beomon, uh, Greymon, Digivolute to Garudamon. Cost three. Draw one. Next, we are going to Digivolute into the strongest Mega. War Greymon. Oh my god. Cost four. Draw one. And it's your turn. The problem man himself. <laughs> oh boy. It's my turn. I draw a card. I, uh, I decide to move Patamon out. And since I see that he has a terrifying War Greymon, I can't do anything about it since it's in, a, it's in the breeding zone. I can't attack it. I can't get rid of it. It's just in its safe zone. But I know it's a problem, so I need to start speeding things up. So I'm going to flood the field. <laughs> So I will play a Patamon for three points. One, two, three. So I will choose to attack with Patamon. And the only things I can attack are Pedro's securities or any Digimon that are suspended. But since Koredramon <laughs> is, is uh, still active, I can't attack it. So I choose to attack his security. Cordramon has an ability on its card. It has blocker. So that means I can use him to intercept attacks on my security, therefore protecting my life. So I will use Cordramon to block Patamon's attack. And so these two Digimon are going to fight now. The way Digimon fight is by comparing their battle power. Mine's 6,000 to Jay's 1,000. So Patamon will be destroyed and Cordramon will survive the battle and protect me. And Patamon dead as hell. <laughs> So now that Cor Cored Ramon, <laughs> so now that Cored Ramon is uh, suspended, I can either choose to attack that Digimon <laughs> or attack his uh, security without any uh, any blockers. So I will choose to attack attack his security with my Magna Angemon. The attack goes through. So security check. Gaia Force. So since it's an option card, it's gonna get played. This allows me to delete one of my opponent's Digimon. I'm gonna delete Magna Angel. I hate you. <laughs> that gets trashed. So I'm probably not gonna be attacking anymore because my Unimon, Unimon, has a blocker status, meaning when he, whenever he attacks, it loses two memory. I lose two memory. So then that would leave me in minus. And then he would also be suspended, which then I can't block any of his attacks, Pedro's attacks on my securities. Also, my Patamon has summoning sickness, so I can't play him, I can't attack with him just yet. From my previous experience from games, I just need to play cards. <laughs> so I play <laughs> I another. I think that's gonna work for you, man. <laughs> Magna Angemon, and I'll, I'm gonna spend seven points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Turn goes to me. At the beginning of the turn, I unsuspend Kored Ramon. Draw one. And then War Greymon is going to enter the battle arena. I hate that man. <laughs> so, Jay, you really shouldn't have given me that much mana, my friend. I don't have any options. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna play Ty. Oh, so okay. Ty is gonna cost two. And when he comes in, he's gonna give all my Digimon plus 1,000 uh, DP. That's messed up. It is. I'm going to Digivolute Koredramon into Garudamon. It's going to cost me three. One, two, three. Draw a card. When Garudamon is Digivolved, I get to give 3,000 power to a Digimon. I'm going to give it to WarGreymon, making him 12,000 plus the three, 15,000, plus 1,000 for Ty, 16,000, and he gets another 1,000 for his inherited effect from Koromon, 16,000 battle power. That's nasty. <laughs> then, War Greymon, security check. Attack with him. So as we've seen, when a Digimon attacks a security, you flip over one card. But War Greymon has an effect that gives him the ability to check multiple cards. He gets a one security check for every two Digimon uh, evolution cards he has. So in this case, that's two. And then Greymon's inherited effect gives him plus one security. So he's going to be checking four cards 
with this attack. Hold on, Pedro, <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> I will not let you attack my security and take four of my securities. <laughs> so I choose to block with Uniman. Okay, so they'll do battle. They'll do battle. I'm at 16,000, man. That dude's smoked. That dude is dead as hell, <laughs> but I still have five securities. That's right. <laughs> I will use a security, uh, launch an attack with Garudamon. Security check. Its power is 8,000. And here we go. One. Garudamon. Garudamon with 5,000 battle power loses to Garudamon. So security check successful. And I have four security. Yep. Digivolution. I will digivolve Garudamon into Phoenixmon. When you digivolve a Digimon that's suspended, it stays suspended. So it'll cost me two. I'll draw a card, and the turn will go to you. My god. Well, the thing is that they're both vulnerable. Right. So if you have ways of dropping their attack power, it's only 12,000 and 12,000. So if you have a way of dropping their power and swinging at me, you, you have a chance. I, I don't. <laughs> but I will draw my card. <laughs> I will hatch an egg. I will Digivolute. Tokemon to Tapirmon. Tapirmon. And that's for free because it has zero cost. Draw another card. Okay. I'm in a very, very tight spot. <laughs> Extremely tight spot. I might lose, but I also might have four random cards and securities that might take out his cards. But uh, let's, let's hope for the best. I gotta spend some of my memory, so I will use Heaven's Gate. That will cost one. That leaves me at zero, and I'll use that on Magna Angemon, which will give him 3,000 DP for the turn. I will attack Pedro's security. Okay. Security check. Bergeron at 5,000 power loses to Magna Angemon. Lose that card. And I'm praying for the best. I will attack his security with this little, little Padamon. <laughs> we'll security see what happens. Check. Grudamon, 7,000 battle power, destroys. Padamon is dead as hell. <laughs> but I only have two security. It's true. So I gotta hope for the best and play this, this bad girl right here, <laughs> Angelmon, costing six co uh, play costs, leaving me at minus six memory. My turn, my Digimon become active, draw a card, and then I breeding face, Digi hatch. Coromon. All right, that's not pussyfoot around. War Greymon, security breaker. Oh my god. Start attacking. Four security checks. Ooh, what is oh, this? Oh, you got saved. So I got Holy Flame, which then on my security, all of your opponent's Digimon gain minus one security attack for the turn. So instead of four, it'll be three. So you get to check. Uh, we've already done one. You get to check two more cards. Okay, one more. <laughs> He's dead. He's Salmon dead. 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 <laughs> Alright. Well, last one, last one. Here we go. Tai. No, uh, not Tai. Uh, Take, Takaishi. Um, when I flip him point. over, I get to play this card without paying its memory cost. So, bam. He is now on the field. And that ends Wargravemon's turn. Yeah, so I wasn't able to finish you. Phoenixmon will attack your Magna Anjumon because it has zero security checks and would not be able to break through um, that security. So uh, 12,000 boosted by 1,000 of Tai, 13,000 versus your 7,000. It's dead. Magna Anjumon is, is dead. dead. We know it's dead. It's dead. Next. Well, I have a lot of mana, Jay. Thank you. So, Coromon, Digivolute, Dracomon. Draw one. Dracomon, Digivolute, Bergeron, cost two, one, two, draw one. Bergeron, Digivolute, Metal Greymon, cost three, one, two, three, draw one. And Metal Greymon, Digivolute, War Greymon, one, yeah, two, two, three, four, <laughs> draw one. <laughs> and that will end my turn, Jay. All right, pray for a miracle. <laughs> Praying for a miracle. Miracle. Fuck. <laughs> I lose. <laughs> well, let's play it out. <laughs> I pull him out. I then security check with Angelmon. Okay. Whoosh. Security check. Metal Greymon. 7,000 power fights your 7,000 Angelmon. So both die. Both clash and die. Get deleted. I security check with Tapermon. Okay. 
Security check. Agumon, 2,000. Loses. He's alive, hell yeah. I just <laughs> need to attack Pedro one more time and I can win the game. But I cannot. <laughs> so I will... You have to hope that that's another holy flame. I just have to hope <laughs> for something. And then I will play Andrew Lamont, leaving me at minus two. Three. Three. Can't count. Okay. Goes to me. Unsuspend Phoenix on. War Greymon. Draw one. During the breeding phase, War Greymon <laughs> <laughs> comes out of okay, the field. Okay, okay. Let's get a little bit stronger. I'm gonna play Ty for another <laughs> thousand power. I'm gonna play Shadow Wing, cost one, for 3,000 power on War Greymon. So now he's up to 15 because of the War Flame, 16, 17, 18,000 battle power. Okay. War Greymon, security check. Heaven's Gate. All your Digimon and security get 5,000 for the turn. Oh, that would have been really helpful. <laughs> would have been helpful. And then I add it to my hand. All right. And then direct attack with Phoenix Mon to end the game. <laughs> Good game, Jay. Good game. Did you have fun? Maybe. <laughs> I think that one just went a little well. You gave me a lot of mana to play with. You could have played it a little bit slower, I think. I don't think I could. I think you could have. No, I don't know. I, I didn't really slower. have the good cards. I had just, I had all these Angelmons and Angelmons. They're all level five. Those Someone, are like the coolest cards in the deck. Maybe. Not when they're in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, good game, Jay. The first game goes to me, um, and that's how you play the Digimon card game. It's pretty straightforward to pick up. Um, there's obviously a few more rules, a few more effects and interactions and whatnot. But just play the game and it, it starts to pick up and come to you naturally. Yeah. The Digimon website has a lot of resources, the rulebook, FAQs, all that. There's also an app that they made, yeah. which is just straight up the game. You can, uh, it's just like a small tutorial and it gives you a half deck to like mess around with. You can just use that to play for yourself if you have no one else to play with. But uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, the game's fun. We'll do a rematch of this game. Yeah, I, I want a rematch. <laughs> I, want, I want one bad. <laughs> it just went well for me. Thanks guys for watching. Please, you know, subscribe, like, comment, and ask. And if you've gotten a chance to find these cards and you're in the Nova DC area, in the comments tell us where to go fucking buy more of these cards. Rematch time. <laughs> now.